Immerse yourself in the intriguing realm of Africa's unsolved mysteries, where the allure of ancient enigmas and perplexing phenomena beckons. As we venture into the depths of Africa's untamed landscapes and rich cultural heritage, we encounter a tapestry of unexplained phenomena that defy rational understanding. From ancient civilizations with their cryptic symbols and forgotten languages, to awe-inspiring archaeological discoveries that challenge our understanding of human history, Africa holds an array of enigmatic secrets waiting to be unraveled. And this video is a seamless voyage through time and culture as we delve into the heart of Africa's enigmas. So, prepare to be captivated, inspired, and forever changed by the untold wonders that lie within this vast and enigmatic continent. Tanzania's Deadly Red Beauty Imagine a lake that can turn you into stone. In the parched northern region of Tanzania, such a lake exists, Lake Natron. Unlike any other lake you've encountered, Lake Natron harbors an extraordinary blend of beauty and danger, defying your imagination. Firstly, parts of Lake Natron occasionally turn red, a sight rarely seen anywhere else. This distinctive feature, along with its highly caustic alkaline nature, sets it apart. The lake's extreme alkalinity, caused by the surrounding volcano, makes it poisonous to most animals. Consequently, the lake and its vicinity are often referred to as Tanzania's stunning but deadly Red Lake. Animals and birds that come into contact with its waters fall victim to its toxicity, resulting in numerous casualties. Cyanobacteria, abundant in Lake Natron's waters, release toxins that cause severe damage to the nervous system, liver, and cells of the species consuming them. The lake's mirror-like surface acts as a tempting invitation for birds, luring them into fatal dives. As a result, countless birds, animals, and bats that succumb to the lake's treacherous waters become eerily preserved, mummified replicas of themselves. These captivating and haunting calcified creatures have been immortalized through the lens of the esteemed artist Nick Brandt. Lake Natron derives its name from its high sodium carbonate content, known as Natron. The presence of this compound contributes to the lake's distinctive red or orange appearance caused by algae blooms that flourish in soda lakes. The intensity of the lake's redness varies as the algae bloom waxes and wanes. Furthermore, the fringes of the lake often display an orange hue, adding to its otherworldly beauty. Although Lake Natron poses a lethal threat to many creatures, it serves as a haven for flamingos. Their thick skin protects them from burns caused by the lake's caustic waters. Additionally, the lake's toxicity acts as a deterrent to predators, providing a secure environment for breeding. Certain fish and invertebrate species can thrive closer to the lake's edges, taking advantage of this unique ecosystem. For those venturing on walking tours around Lake Natron, it is possible to visit during both the dry and rainy seasons. However, it is strongly advised to refrain from swimming in its treacherous waters, the abyss of the Blue Hole. For those who crave the thrill of extreme sports, scuba diving offers an unparalleled avenue for adventure. While scuba diving, as a sport, is generally safe within personal limits, proper equipment maintenance, and adherence to diving protocols, there exist dive sites that push the boundaries of human capabilities, Sites where divers seek to embrace the true essence of daring. One such site, infamous among divers, is the Blue Hole in Dahab. However, before donning your gear and heading to Egypt, it is essential to make arrangements for your loved ones. For the Blue Hole's reputation as one of the most treacherous dive sites on the planet precedes it. Just as the challenge of climbing Everest or Kilimanjaro entices mountaineers, the allure of the Blue Hole captivates divers. What would life be without daredevils pushing the limits of human endeavor? Make no mistake, diving into the depths of the Blue Hole is no ordinary feat. It is a dive into one of the most demanding environments, offering an experience you won't soon forget. Despite the fact that numerous divers have lost their lives there, many continue to brave the 80-meter-wide abyss. While there is no official count, it is estimated that at least 150 scuba divers have met their fate within the past decade alone. Dahab offers various dives, each presenting its own challenges and depths to explore. 
One notable dive is through the swimmable arch at 56 meters, 184 feet, leading to open water. This particular arch entices technical divers, luring them with its mysterious allure. Unlike many other extreme dive locations, the Blue Hole is surprisingly accessible. A short dive straight from the beach, it deceives newcomers, masking its true dangers. The absence of strong currents and the calm, clear, and temperate water can lull drivers into a false sense of security. However, one must not let this apparent tranquility distract from the importance of maintaining focus and caution throughout the dive. Care must be taken to adhere to the knowledge and skills acquired during diving preparations. The siren call of the blue hole may entice, but one must resist complacency. To dive safely and within trained limits, one must possess exceptional buoyancy skills and ample experience. Many divers mistakenly believe that a mere 20 dives make them competent and experienced. However, the true measure lies not in the quantity, but in the quality of experience. As you descend to considerable depths, the insidious grasp of nitrogen narcosis takes hold, impairing decision-making abilities while paradoxically evoking a sense of euphoria. At this critical juncture, a delicate balance is needed. Failure to control the descent can lead to a perilous path, where one spirals deeper into the abyss, unaware of the dangers lurking. Around 56 meters, the point of no return, oxygen toxicity presents a lethal threat. It is in this realm that divers risk the ultimate price. Venturing into the blue hole demands respect, careful planning, and unwavering vigilance. It is a realm that separates the experienced from the reckless, where the convergence of man and nature reveals both the awe-inspiring and the unforgiving. Enigmatic Dendera light nestled within the remarkable Temple of Hathor at Dendera, one of Egypt's exceptionally preserved ancient structures, lies a depiction that has sparked intense debate. The enigmatic Dendera light. This captivating artifact, if indeed an example of ancient technology, raises the intriguing possibility of electric lighting in ancient Egypt. Within the temple's walls, three stone reliefs portray what has come to be known as the Dendera light. At first glance, the object resembles a slender tube-shaped bulb with a lotus socket on one end, a concealed cable running beneath it, and a serpentine filament within. A priest, depicted in the most iconic illustration, holds the lamp aloft, while several other miniature figures can be discerned below. Notably, the bulb appears to be pointing upwards, guided by one of the characters. Accompanying the lamp is a two-armed jed pillar, with its hands seemingly connected to the serpent-like cord within. Moreover, a baboon, clutching two knives, is depicted in front of the light. The notion that this ancient depiction represents an electrical lamp was initially proposed by a Norwegian electrical engineer. However, the majority of Egyptologists attribute an alternative meaning to the so-called Dendera light. To truly comprehend the significance of these reliefs, it is essential to consider the accompanying inscriptions and other pictorial elements. Dr. Wolfgang Waitkus, an esteemed Egyptologist, has provided valuable insights based on translations of the writings associated with these images. According to the inscriptions, Hathor, the goddess often associated with love, beauty, and fertility, is represented as the serpent emerging from the lotus flower. The Jed Pillar carrying the corpse of Horus, another revered deity known as the unifier of two lands, is referred to as the Cable. Thus, the Dendera Light hypothesis suggests that the symbols within the relief are intrinsically connected to Egyptian mythology. By delving deeper into ancient Egyptian creation myths, we discover the profound significance of the Lotus Flower. Legend has it that the Lotus was the first entity to emerge from the boundless primordial sea, known as the Sea of the Two Knives, which existed before creation itself. From this flower, Atumra, the solar deity, was born. A parallel can be drawn between the relief at the Temple of Hathor and other ancient representations of the Lotus in the form of a lamp. Additionally, it is worth noting that Atum Ra was often portrayed as a serpent within a bubble, symbolizing the universe's emergence from nothingness. Consequently, the portrayal of the sun god emanating from the lotus flower is widely accepted by Egyptologists as the true interpretation of the Dendera light. 
To fully grasp the intricate symbolism within the controversial reliefs, it is vital to consider the rich tapestry of Egyptian mythology, rituals, and their pantheon of deities, along with concepts of rebirth. Furthermore, the absence of historical references to the use of electricity in ancient Egypt presents a compelling argument against the Dendera light hypothesis. Despite the extensive excavation of numerous ancient sites across Egypt, archaeologists have not discovered any clear evidence of electrical objects, let alone light bulbs. This absence of empirical proof challenges the notion that the ancient Egyptians employed electrical lighting. Advocates of the Dendera light hypothesis propose that the use of electric lights was limited to private rituals performed by the ancient priests during New Year's and creation-related festivals. They speculate that the artifacts themselves may have been intentionally destroyed in secrecy or as part of a ritualistic tradition. However, it is essential not to overlook the inscriptions and the narrative unfolding within the vignette. While some sections of the Dendera reliefs may remain open to interpretation, the profound enigma continues to captivate tourists from around the world, drawing them to witness the intriguing and contentious carvings within one of Egypt's most magnificent monuments, the eerie enigma of Dedvali's spooky dead trees. As you go about your daily routine, you stroll past countless trees without even sparing them a second glance. It's a common sight that hardly registers in your mind. But hold on, we're about to embark on a thrilling journey to Africa, where a remarkable phenomenon turns these ordinary trees into something straight out of a spooky tale. Brace yourself as we step into the heart of Namibia, where amidst the majestic red dunes lies a place that will send shivers down your spine. Welcome to Dedvlai, a hauntingly beautiful oasis nestled within the arid Namib desert, waiting to captivate your imagination. Dedvlai is an alien landscape, where time seems to stand still. The vibrant red dunes that encircle the area owe their striking color to centuries of weathering. In the heart of Dedvlai lies a vast salt flat, its clay subsoil dense and compact. The clay forms a hard, arid surface when dry, but becomes sticky and plastic when wet. Every five to ten years, when nourished by the nearby river, this area becomes the river's final destination. Even during the wettest years, the waters soak into the salt clay pan, earning the name Place of No Return. The combination of the clear blue sky, red dunes, and white salt pan creates a breathtaking scene that resembles scenes from cinematic masterpieces like The Fall, The Cell, and Steel Dawn. Nearby, there is an even older and more desolate place than Deadfly. Known as Dead Flay or Dead Marsh, it is home to some of the world's tallest dunes, reaching heights of up to 1,312 feet, nearly as tall as the Empire State Building. Denver, the predecessor of Dedvle, was once a thriving oasis teeming with life. The river brought sustenance to the desert, supporting a diverse array of flora and fauna, including trees. However, around 900 years ago, the climate shifted and the river dried up. The dunes gradually cut Denver off from the river's life-giving waters, Dedvle became too dry for the trees to decompose, leaving them scorched black by the relentless sun, frozen in time as eerie memorials to their own demise. These ancient trees, over 1,000 years old, now stand as a desolate forest in a barren land. Although Dedvle appears devoid of life, it is not entirely gloomy. Salsola shrubs and clusters of narrow melon miraculously survive by absorbing the morning mists. Moreover, one of the many reasons to visit this haunting place is to witness the mesmerizing sunrise or sunset over the Namib Desert's colossal red sand dunes. The skies above Dedvlai offer some of the clearest views on the entire planet, a journey into our ancient origins. Deep within a mystical South African cave, a groundbreaking discovery has astounded scientists and added an enigmatic branch to the ever-evolving human family tree. Years ago, two adventurous cavers embarked on a daring expedition, venturing into the renowned Rising Star Cave, located just 30 miles northwest of Johannesburg. The cave had been a popular destination for explorers since the 1960s, renowned for its intricate network of channels and caverns that held a treasure trove of fossilized remains. Stephen Tucker and Rick Hunter 
eager to tread lesser-known paths, had an inkling of the possibilities awaiting them in this region known as the Cradle of Humankind. Although the golden age of fossil hunting had passed, whispers of a scientist in Johannesburg piecing together bone fragments piqued their curiosity. Their chances of unearthing something extraordinary seemed slim, but the allure of the unknown beckoned. With their bodies contorting through narrow openings, the intrepid duo finally found themselves in a chamber adorned with cascading white flowstones. But it wasn't the crystalline beauty that captured their attention. It was what lay strewn across the chamber floor. Bones scattered haphazardly, as though tossed aside by some unseen hand, captured their awe. And amidst this skeletal jigsaw, a piece of a human lower jaw, complete with teeth, revealed itself. The photos they took told a story clear to the scientific community. These bones did not belong to a modern human. Their characteristics, particularly the jawbone and teeth, bore an astonishingly primitive nature. Further examination of the photos unveiled more skeletal remains, including a partially buried cranium. It became evident that the chamber housed not just one, but many skeletons, two, then three, and eventually over 1,550 specimens, each representing at least 15 individuals. Skilled scientists were sought to meticulously excavate the site and reveal the secrets of this newfound species. Skulls, jaws, ribs, teeth, each piece told a tale of our ancient past. The fossilized remains presented a puzzling mix of modern and primitive features. Some parts appeared strikingly modern, while others retained a primitive, even ape-like nature surpassing even the renowned Australopithecines. Of particular importance were the 190 teeth, as these could help identify the species. However, these teeth defied categorization, bearing unique features that left scientists astounded. The question lingered. How did the bones of Homo naledi find their resting place in this hidden chamber? Exhausting every other possibility, researchers eventually concluded that these ancient beings had been deliberately placed there by their own kind, a practice previously only attributed to Homo sapiens and possibly Neanderthals. This extraordinary discovery challenged our understanding of human evolution, adding a mesmerizing new chapter to the intricate story of our ancestry. The City of Heracleion Once upon a time, in a city guarded by the god Happy, Helen and her abductor Paris sought refuge. This city was none other than Heracleion. However, for many centuries, Heracleion lay lost beneath the waves, forgotten in the depths of the Mediterranean Sea. Then, a group of divers working off the Egyptian coast stumbled upon a remarkable discovery, one that would reveal the secrets of this long-lost city. As the divers explored the seabed, they unearthed a large fragment of rock encrusted with salt, this piece of the puzzle turned out to be an intact representation of the god Happy. Their excitement grew, and they continued their search, unearthing six more fragments that led them to temple ruins, pottery shards, precious jewelry, coins, oil lamps, processional barges, and sculpted busts. Heracleion, a city largely forgotten in history, had once been a thriving metropolis. Few people today have heard its name, unlike the famous cities of Babylon, Pompeii, or the mythical Atlantis. Yet, until recent years, the physical remains of Heracleion, along with its memory, were in danger of being swallowed completely by the Mediterranean waves. In the 5th century BC, if you were a European merchant, whether dealing in grain, perfume, papyrus, or exporting silver, copper, wine, or oil, the name Heracleion would have loomed large on your horizon. It didn't matter if you were a cunning merchant, a well-educated Greek, a skilled sailor, or a member of the Pharaonic court. Heraclean spread across interconnected islands, sandbanks, and mudbanks, and served as ancient Egypt's cosmopolitan gateway to the Mediterranean, a bustling hub of international commerce. Controlled by the city, the majority of maritime trade entering Egypt from the Mediterranean flowed through Heraclean. Canals crisscrossed the city, which boasted harbors, wharves, temples, and tower houses, interconnected by a network of ferries, bridges, and pontoons. 
Goods passing through Heraclean would be meticulously inspected and taxed at the Customs Administration Center before continuing their journey inland. They would be transported to Naucratis, another prominent trading port, or via the Western Lake, which connected to the town of Canopus, providing access to various parts of the country. Among the treasures discovered, one stands out, the Decree of Saïs. This magnificent black stele, standing two meters tall, bears perfectly preserved hieroglyphics from the early 4th century BC. It offers a glimpse into the complexities of ancient Egyptian taxation. The decree reads, His Majesty, Pharaoh Nectanebo I, decreed, Let there be given one-tenth of the gold, silver, timber, and all things coming from the Mediterranean, to become divine offerings to my mother, Neith. This artifact not only enhances our understanding of ancient Egyptian taxation, but also helps unravel a long-standing mystery by confirming that Thonis and Heraclean were, in fact, one unified city, rather than two separate towns. Another captivating find from the watery depths is a 2-0-0-0-year-old stone figurine of Cleopatra III, a Ptolemaic queen depicted as the Egyptian goddess Isis. The sculpture skillfully combines local and Hellenic aesthetics, offering a glimpse into the artistic fusion of two rich cultures. The artifacts associated with Heraclean hold an allure that rivals any ancient mystery. Among the city's remains, the annual Mysteries of Osiris celebration held throughout ancient Egypt remains particularly enthralling. It involved the preparation in the secrecy of temples of two figures, Osiris, the god of the underworld, and resurrection. One figure was made of soil and barley, while the other was crafted from expensive materials, including ground-up semi-precious stones. Thanks to the remarkable discoveries made in recent years, the lost splendor of Heraclean is slowly being unveiled, adding to our knowledge of the past and the grandeur of ancient Egyptian civilization. A Gem of Mythical Origins when Italian geologist Angelo Pitone embarked on a journey to Sierra Leone to assess the potential diamond deposits in the Kono region, he had no idea he was about to stumble upon an extraordinary discovery. Amid his studies, Pitone encountered a captivating stone that had been overlooked for inexplicable reasons. Shrouded in mystery, the local chief Schobertoni presented Pitone with one of the most enigmatic stones he had ever witnessed in his career. This stone possessed a captivating blue hue adorned with intriguing white lines across its surface. The tribal chief, intrigued by Patone's curiosity, shared an ancient legend explaining the extraordinary richness of diamonds in the area. According to the tale, when a revolt brewed among God's angels, they were cast down to earth, transforming into statues upon their descent. Accompanying them were portions of the sky and stars, which fell and merged with the earthly realm. Astonishingly, tests revealed that this captivating stone defied conventional classification. Neither turquoise nor officially catalogued, it was composed of a remarkable 77.17% oxygen, with carbon, silicon, and calcium constituting the remaining percentages. Chamorel's Seven-Colored Earth while rainbows grace the skies with their vibrant hues, there exists a magical patch of land in Mauritius that showcases all seven colors of the rainbow coexisting harmoniously. Nestled amidst lush forests, the seven-colored earths in Chamorel stands as a rare geological marvel, debunking the notion that brown reigns as the sole shade of soil. Within this small area, enchanting dunes boast an array of colors, ranging from red and brown to violet, green, blue, purple, and yellow. These psychedelic sand dunes owe their existence to a fortuitous convergence of volcanic activity, bringing together a variety of elements, each possessing its own distinct hue. The mesmerizing sight of these sand dunes, adorned in their separate shades yet intertwined, draws tourists from across the globe. Astonishingly, Despite Mauritius's heavy and frequent rainfall, the secret behind how the colors remain distinct when mixed and defy erosion continues to elude scientists. Chamorel's seven-colored earths have transformed into a premier tourist attraction, magnifying the island's natural beauty tenfold. However, visitors are not permitted to tread upon these captivating dunes. Instead, 
A wooden fence guides their gaze toward the picturesque scenery from observation outposts placed strategically along its perimeter. Undeniably, the seven colored earths stand as one of nature's most captivating and intriguing phenomena, a spectacle that enchants all who behold it. The enchanting illusion of the underwater waterfall. If you're an avid traveler, you've probably witnessed breathtaking waterfalls around the world. From the iconic Niagara Falls to the awe-inspiring Firefall in Yosemite National Park. However, there's a unique phenomenon you might not have seen yet, a captivating illusion of an underwater waterfall. Mauritius, an island that has recently captured the world's attention, holds this mesmerizing secret. Although not a real waterfall, it appears as if a cascading waterfall is submerged in the ocean itself. This illusion can only be witnessed from above. Mauritius, being a relatively young island, is situated on an ocean shelf raised above the seabed level. Along the island's shoreline, there's a gradual slope leading to a sudden 2.5-mile drop to the ocean floor. This marine topography creates an enchanting display of various shades of blue, caused by the movement of sand and silt deposits along the slopes. The underwater waterfall illusion is formed by these deposits sliding down the slope and gracefully plunging into the abyss. Capturing the beauty of this illusion from the shore is quite challenging. However, if you take to the skies and experience it from a helicopter, the flowing water-like appearance becomes truly breathtaking. Tourists are offered helicopter tours to witness this spectacular effect firsthand, an experience that leaves them in awe. Africa's Mysterious Stonehenge Have you ever heard of Stonehenge? Most people are familiar with the prehistoric collection of large stones in Salisbury, England. However, what many people don't know is that there exists another Stonehenge in Africa, and it's just as enigmatic. Decades after its discovery by Western scientists, numerous aspects of this monument remain shrouded in mystery. Introducing the Stone Circles of Senegambia, the largest group of megalithic complexes ever recorded in any region of the world. Found in Gambia and Senegal, this extraordinary site boasts a staggering 1,053 stone circles and a total of 28,931 monoliths. Impressively, 93 of these circles are recognized as UNESCO World Heritage Sites, including the Senegayini Complex in Senegal, as well as the Warner Wasu and Kerbach complexes in the Gambia. Stretching over 100 kilometers in width and 350 kilometers in length along the River Gambia, these stones stand as a testament to ancient craftsmanship. While the purpose of their construction remains a mystery, scientists have managed to determine their approximate age through the discovery of burial tombs in the area. It is believed that these stones were erected between 927 and 1305 AD. Each stone measures around 2 meters in height and weighs up to 7 tons. One of the most perplexing aspects of the stone circles of Senegambia is how these massive stones were transported to their current locations without the assistance of modern tools, lifts, or vehicles. The ancient techniques used to accomplish such a feat continue to puzzle researchers to this day. The Enigmatic Sahara Eye For centuries, hidden within the vast expanse of the Sahara Desert, lay a remarkable geological formation that resembled a colossal bullseye. Known as the Blue Eye of the Sahara, or alternately as the Richat Structure, or Guelber Richat, it remained a secret known only to a few nomadic tribes in the region. However, its true magnificence was captured for the first time in the 1960s, when the Gemini astronauts, on their historic space mission, photographed this awe-inspiring spectacle from above, the Eye of the Sahara became a crucial landmark for the astronauts, aiding them in tracking their landing sequences. As technology advanced, the Landsat satellite further revealed the grandeur of the formation, providing invaluable data about its size, height, and extent. Initially, geologists speculated that this remarkable feature was an impact crater resulting from a cosmic collision with Earth's surface. However, their understanding evolved and they now believe it to be a geological dome. This extraordinary formation holds rocks that have existed for over 100 million years, 
with some dating back to a time before life on Earth even existed. Its formation commenced during the breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea, when the waters of the Atlantic Ocean began flowing into the region. Today, both amateur enthusiasts and seasoned geologists alike journey to the Eye of the Sahara, eager to study this unique geological wonder firsthand. Despite its remote location in the sparsely populated desert with scarce water resources and minimal rainfall, this natural masterpiece remains untouched by human interference. And that's a wrap for now. If you found this video fascinating, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Join our community and stay tuned for more captivating content. And don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. Thanks for watching and until next time, keep exploring the extraordinary world we live in.